All right, we're back on this Honda. And this is the one that had the front shaft seal leaking. It was spraying, uh, the oil was coming out between the clutch face and the clutch itself and spraying around inside the engine compartment. One of the things that Honda should warranty. Now, we see a little scraping. I just started taking apart. So this is the back part. You can see the brass bronze bushing there. Here's our plate. Here's our reed valves here. These are the things that you damage when you liquid slug inside. You might not break them, but you can just distort them by getting too much liquid in them and then they don't seal right. It still cools a little bit. It has some prob low capacity problems. Uh, here's the pistons. So let's pull that out. You can see all the oil, you can see the plates. If you ever did a um, two stroke motorcycle racing or rebuild chainsaws, You'll recognize that from inside motorcycles and uh, chainsaws for two-stroke engines. And uh, you can see the bushing right there that the bearing surface rides on. So they have these coated pistons here. They're no longer, and I'm trying to show you the swatch. Now here's the bearings. This is nothing like the bearings of an old Axia 6 that were like almost the size of a silver dollar with big giant bearings on them or your york or tecumseh you got little tiny bearings let's pull that apart it's one of the races in the bearing surface and there's the tiny tiny little needle bearing to get the other race surface off there so you really need to keep lubricant on down in here if you look at the size of these if you broke out a number two lead pencil those bearings that roll are smaller than a number two bear uh, number two lead inside a pencil so that's that right there the thrush wa that's a thrush washer so that's a wafer washer on there that puts the thrust on the bearing it's uh, not perfectly straight and it's meant to be like that because it puts a spring pressure and um, I take a risk but... okay so right now looking at the swash plate this is the surface that it rides on right here. And right now it's almost perfectly straight. So with the clutch on and this plate spinning, the pistons would not move. They'd just basically stay still because it'd be a, a plate that's in planes spin, spinning like this. But when the gas valve from the actuator, from the uh, compressor controller, the one that always goes bad, it differentiates the pressure from this port to this port. And that will make the plate here. You can see how this thing, see how these move around here? So normally these would go in and out. The plate would move. There it is. And you see it, they're just like the old Axios 6 from the 1950s and 60s. Those were the compressors I used to rebuild as a kid. My, my, that's the first ones my dad taught me to tr take apart. So they do the same, same thing. And here it is. Here's the mechanism. And you could see the plane in line of the spinning clutch. So if the clutch was attached right here and it was spinning, the pistons right on this and they would not move. But then if you, you see how this moves? So this gets the pressure from the actuator from right there. It gets a duty cycle like a injector and it tells this plate to move. It forces this plate to move. Now, if you see, as this plate moves over like this, it tilts and now it's spinning. You see what's gonna happen when it spins and it's tilted? Let's see if I could do that. See it's tilted now, there it's straight, there it's tilted. Now it's gonna spin like that and since it's no longer straight, the more you, the more duty cycle you give the actuator, the more the plate moves. And the more the plate moves, these pistons will stroke. When the plate is fully down like this, the pistons will fully stroke like this. So you got maximum displacement. So they'll move back and forth inside their bores. And that's how you get your displacement, your compression. Well, when it gets a command and it satisfies cooling, you see this start to move like this, and then the pistons will just go back a little bit. If it only needs 20% capacity, you'll have pistons going like this. 
in and out, in and out. As the plate moves and it'll only tilt a little bit, it'll just move a little bit. But then when you have a heavy heat load, it'll get the command to move the plate more through the actuator valve and then the pistons will go up and down more like this. Whoops. It'll go up and down more like this and there's more refrigerant being moved. And there's the needle valves plate for the thrush washer on the other side. Now those are a little bit bigger than a number two pencil. And then they have a bushing. And then there's the seal down inside there. That's the shaft seal, what is very common to give out on these uh, Hondas, which Honda should cover them under warranty because they have so many failing before their warranty. I mean, just ridiculously fast. And that's it. That's uh, basically it. These things are so light. Uh, that's basically it. And actually, these almost feel like they're phenolic. Um, that's it on these simple Honda compressors. They only, this is only about twenty or thirty dollars in manufacturing costs here. That's basically their true value. But of course, you have to pay like three hundred dollars for them, four hundred, five hundred. And uh, I'll see you guys later. I think that does it for this Honda.